Okay, good morning, Dan. It's uh, July 30th, and it's, uh, what, uh, 1.44 your time? Yep. So, uh, all right, uh, we were just talking about something here, and uh, this is kind of an unplanned uh, Zoom topic. So I, I'll i just let you carry on from your thought here that we we're developing. Yes, when um, when Scripture said we're in the world but not of it, this is the probably the most misinterpreted legal stupidity um, aired comment by organized Christian religion. Uh, they they step into it because they don't have eyes to see because they're so they're involved in legalism. No part of the world would be no part of anything secular. So that means you wouldn't be a party. You would not be a party to the record, correct? Right. Anything legal, you wouldn't be part of because if it's a worldly legal record that's there for the recreation uh, of a, a recreational entertainment use of something that's not truthful, it's not creation, they're doing a recreation of who you are into something that you're not. Um, so they're trying to create a legal persona and they need a legal birth name because we know that surname uh, or birth name only refers to the legal surname uh, in the jurisdiction where the person was born. So we take this no part of the world, I'm in the world, but no part of it, now, imagine all these legal preachers talking about this when they're actually writing in legal persona all the time. They author books in legal persona, even commenting on this subject matter, because they rely on the support legally of their legal church, and they need legal surname personas uh, to go out and labor and support them. So they can't collect on the collection plate without them. So therefore, this is where the problem comes in right away. This is just one layer of the problem. So when we're saying we're in the world, but not of it, well, then we got to be very careful how that lays out. So in the world, well, I just take the statement of birth record. So here's a birth record uh, filmed, or, you know, filled out in Ontario, Canada, framed. Okay. They have both the god-given christian name on the record and they also have the legal surname on the record they have the given the fact and then they have the fiction and the whole purpose of deception is to induce someone to believe that something which is false is true by framing somebody with an accusation satan is the accuser of the people of god and the whole English law system, which is in use along with the Roman civil system, is based on an accusatory system of law. And it relies on you consenting to be the accused. Okay, so the legal state surname that is only legal, it's not natural, has nothing to do with your real name, has nothing to do with the real naming process that your parents had, because your parents are only placing on the record uh, a duality in there, a duplicity of not only the naming process that God gave them the right to do, and then we are born after the event of Jesus Christ. So therefore, God-given goes into God-given Christian jurisdiction. And then they add the legal state surname to it in addition to your real name. It's the name added to one's real name. And therefore, that's where this merger comes in and the confusion comes in. Yeah, and I just want to comment. And it, and it requires <laughs> consent for you to take on the accusation. Yeah, I just wanted to comment uh, where you said before Christ bought the righteous and the unrighteous. Yes. So everyone worldwide born after the event of Christ, right, has a Christian given name. Whether and they that's know it because a given name is based on truth. And because God is the source of all truth, and because it also relates to the power that he has placed upon Christ, um, who also represents truth and love, good faith, not bad faith, 
this is all connected in what would be a given for a factual name. Fiction belongs to the legalists, the deniers of the Messiah. Fact belongs to the people of God because the truth will make you free. So when we go through that in the world, not of it, when you look at it, and I had to make, say, a statement, my real, true, God-given Christian name, we also call it a spiritual name, a baptismal name, mm -hmm. because when you realize that you're baptized by the power of peace, the Holy Spirit, um, and is the one, the legal framed, sorry, it's on the record, this record, despite it's not of the world, it's in it. To be in and of are two different things. So I could be in a place that I don't belong, but it doesn't mean I'm of that place. So just consider yourself foreign to legal because truth is foreign to fiction because it can't be one and the same. Truth doesn't work in fiction. That's why it can't go to work or operate in that contract in good faith. So uh, when we're looking at that, uh, our real, true, God-given Christian name may be on the legal framed birth surname statement of birth record. It is, although in truth, um, appearing on that record, it's on there, but it's not party to the legal constitution of legal persona birthing that occurs on secular records of this nature. So it's not part of it. It was never part of it. Now it require consent and for someone to act on it. So of course they have to come up with a birth certificate. Uniquely, the majority of the birth certificates issued in Ontario are left ambiguous and unclear. They just say name. And when you look at name, it comes from gnome. Uh, it also, which means a pseudo name, a false name, because it's carrying the weight of direction on the fictional name, this recent invention that we've installed in society that does not predate the God uh, naming process that was given to Adam in the garden. So the source of naming comes from God, but to an extent, unfortunately, because of the lack of knowledge of the population away from God, the evil know the Bible better than the supposed legal acting Christians out there in their legal churches. And so they just consider that Adam was given the authority to name animals. And so what they do is they name what is going to be under their plot to take people away from God. They will basically name them something that relates to being an animal, which is why they call it a human now. Because after Adamic sin occurred, then men were dressed or covered in animal skins, even though at first Adam and Eve covered up their naked truth of who they were with fig leaves, which would have been a figment of their imagination that God did not know what they looked like naked. So they were already covering up, ashamed in the sham of what had happened, and therefore you can see the process in this. So... It's, um, you know, it, it's uh, uh, they're framing something in error, but if someone doesn't see this, they are acting in error. And that's why Peter warned about those who would live in error. You can't be an heir to the promised land, be an inheritor of God's trust in benefit of peace and the earth when you're acting in pride and arrogance with these legal, haughty, appropriate appellation, nicknames, surnames, because they literally mean nothing more than a debt or a debtor in sin.
So the ones who operate the system, as we read in uh, Psalm 49, uh, you know, they're using Psalm 49 very well because they're the, the elites who actually know this book better than the supposed licensed preachers who are supposed to be shepherding their flocks. No, um, we get to Psalm 40, uh, uh, 49, which says, hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world. Notice it doesn't say the earth. Both low and high, rich and poor together. Now, um, actually, you have, uh, Chuck's got the, uh, you have that other Bible there for a second. We'll, we'll read out of the New World Order Bible. I can grab it. That's not a problem. Play here. What's interesting, this organization, um, noted as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, who creates a society and then they have their people walking around with the trade name Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, maybe they didn't read where it says you will be witnesses for Christ in the New Testament but it doesn't say you'll be witnesses for Jehovah because God sent his son for that specific purpose as his anointed one. It's not to say that, uh, that God doesn't have a name and that it wouldn't be appropriate, um, you know, to use that name. But in the new Testament, we tend to get into, uh, more of a intimate, uh, informal relationship with God where he's noted more as the father as in the Lord's Prayer, we are to pray this way, our Father. Uh, and Jesus being his only begotten Son, he sent his only begotten Son, and he was known as Jesus Christ, Christos, uh, the anointed of God, and therefore uh, he is the appointed one raised to the right-hand side of God because he followed the will of God and was known as the last Adam, who actually... Uh, brought us back to the Genesis, back to the beginning before original sin. So when you're looking in Psalm 49, um, the legalists of this organization are quite <laughs> astute. In fact, they've actually, um, we're one of the few religious groups um, that have actually been able to use the laws against the uh, against the Roman civil state. Uh, mainly because of the fact is they're more like the Pharisees, this organization, because they uh, they can use the laws against the system because they're so well versed in it. And that was what the Roman leaders once said uh, when they were dealing with these the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that they were aware um, that that people at the time that were under their bondage seemed to be able to. Um, not be like the oppressed. They were acting more like the oppressor, and they considered it very dangerous that these groups could actually use the Roman law or the Roman legal system against the Romans themselves because of their ability to read the law. So Psalm 49, this group seems to have done well because they took out that scripture that we read in Psalm uh, 49 in the King James, where it says, hear this all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. Here it says, hear this, all you peoples, give ear, all you inhabitants of the system of things. They called the system of things what the King James said was the world. Well, it is a system of legal things. You sons of humankind as well as you sons of man, which says that there are two groups. They're saying here that the low would be you sons of humankind as well as you sons of man. You rich one and you poor one together. Those of poor of knowledge would be in the humankind. Those rich in knowledge would be the sons of man. Not to say that they're operating in good conscience, but they are, in essence, in more knowledge of Scripture than these legal pulpit 
preachers that are out there that most Christians have listened to wearing their pagan suits and Pythagoras tie costumes. Uh, so, Dan, could I just comment on that? Uh, yep. Well, you said a little bit, uh, you sons of humankind as well as you sons of man. Now, we're we're actually, you know, professing being sons of God, right? Yep. Not sons of man. Well, so you... I, I, I'm kind of just let me finish first. Well, second. remember, Jesus was called the Son of Man. Okay. So we got to be careful that we just don't grab a scripture here and a scripture there. They do work in harmony, and there can be different contextual use that stay in harmony. It's just what we talked about the other day about natural. Natural can be used in contradistinction to legal. But at times, uh, it was it was used in direction um, the natural man. But in essence, it would have been more appropriate when it was referring to a sinful man in the scripture in some of the translations to have put a natural person, because the natural person doesn't see God. That's the natural God given named individual blinded by legalism with a legal state assigned surname who says he doesn't believe in free grace he will operate to pay his own sins mm -hmm. so a a man uh, a natural man us being born in the sinful condition of of uh, the downline of adam uh without redemption uh, like you said at the beginning, God sees us as you will die like beasts. So that's the right. unredeemed man. And yes. when you're redeemed, consider yourself, you're now in essence with the power of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural man. Yes, that's what I wanted to distinguish here is the natural man now becomes the supernatural recognized man. Yeah. Okay. Though he's not wearing a cape and he's not flying through the sky. <laughs> he will not be known or confused with Superman. Right. <laughs> okay, good enough. All right, I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Thank you. Okay.